I've purchased myself a few faulty games consoles from eBay in the attempt of repairing them and making a profit. The first faulty item is in a rather big box and then another big box. To be honest, I'm really liking what the seller went through to protect this console. However, I do think this is way too much bubble wrap. First item on the agenda, Xbox One S console. The fault on this one in particular is that it doesn't have any power. The total cost of this item was 45 pounds. Then we move on to item number two is an absolute behemoth. And for this item, I actually paid 200 pounds. It is in fact, the newest Xbox console and Xbox Series X. Very happy that it actually comes with the original box. The issue with this one specifically as well, that it just all of a sudden randomly stopped powering up one day. So loss of power. We have two items, two faulty consoles that don't have any power whatsoever. Our total spend for the consoles is 245 pounds. Let's see if we can make a profit and hopefully not a loss. Let's start with our first item, which is an Xbox One S. I think this is a one terabyte version. You can't really see with the light, but there is a little bit of a yellow stain on the top of the console. And I also left my gloves at work. First things first, give it a test, see if it powers on. It definitely does not power on. This is good. The console has not yet been opened in its life, which is also another really, really good sign. My spidey sense is telling me either it's going to be a power supply issue or we have a 12 volt short. Let's take the console apart. It's actually confirmed, did we hit the jackpot? Nope, we have a 500 gigabyte drive, that's fine. Just taking the last couple of screws out and then we're gonna test the power supply. And my multimeter on the left, plug in the power supply. What we wanna see on this power supply is 12 volts. So let's have a look and see if that's what we're getting. And no, we don't, we don't get 12 volts at all. We get nothing, dead. Now, admittedly, I've done this last week and I found that I didn't plug the cable in. So I am just gonna trace my cable wire to make sure that it is definitely plugged in, which it is. I can confirm the power lead is active. Now, I do have a spare Xbox One S power supply. So if I plug that same cable in, this should be a good way to test. Put our meter back into DC voltage mode. And then we're gonna measure now. There we go, we get 12 volts, okay. I've not ever had this issue where it's been a faulty power supply for an Xbox One S, which is really, really good because I have the part available. I don't have to strip the board down any further and I can just straight up replace it. Oh wow, it looks like this power supply actually went Bang. Again, never seen something like this before on an Xbox One S that I've bought from eBay. That is crazy. I hope the actual board and circuit are okay, but the power supply looks like it was definitely faulty. Because of the mark that's left behind, I'm just gonna check and see if there's a short on the 12 volt line or if we're okay. There's no short on the 12 volt line. So in theory, when I put this power supply in the console, it should power up. What a simple, easy repair this will be if we manage to get it working. Okay, plug the hard drive back in for testing. Come on. I have to put a little power board in as well. So we have an on button. I'm actually gonna be very hopeful and even go as far to put the HDMI cable in. Hopefully this doesn't blow up. I saw a fan spin, so that's really good news. Let's go over to our Elgato game scene. How we get a light. This is amazing so far. Do we get an output on the screen? This is always the tense part. There we go. Okay, I've just been able to fix an Xbox One S where I've taken a part from a donor board and put it into this console that wasn't working. And would you look at that, we're on the home screen. Now, another moment of truth. Do we bump up the profit even more by having a disc in the console? No, unfortunately not. No disc in the console, that's a shame. But I just need to confirm if it does read a disc. It does indeed. Everything works absolutely fine with this Xbox One S. My plan now is to give the Xbox a nice little clean, especially around the power supply on the motherboard. Whilst I'm there, I might as well give it some new thermal paste and make it nice and shiny for its new owner. Hopefully the next one is the same because then we'll be quids in. Now to put that sticker back, almost as the, the seal of approval. Nice. Just turn the brightness down on the camera to see if we can get rid of the, uh, the yellow marks that are on the top of the console. I mean, it definitely looks a little bit better. I wouldn't say it's got rid of it completely, but it's not hugely noticeable either. Now with this console fixed, let's move on to the big dog, the Xbox Series X. When we first had a look at this, like I said, it has the box, which is really good news. I think it will appeal to people more if they see the box in the listing. And here we have the actual Xbox. Let me take it out of the box and see what it come with. Oh wow, it had like the original paperwork in it and everything. The manual, the unit even came with the controller, which on its own is probably worth around 30 to 40 pounds, I'd say. Second hand anyway, and it's in great condition. Also, I don't know if these 
still come with batteries or not, or whether they come out of the box now with the rechargeable battery. But that's gonna be a massive selling point as well, because these are worth a little bit. This might have turned out to be a fantastic little buy, as long as we can get it working. So we have the controller, we've got a USB-A to USB-C cable as well. We've got the power cable. We've got another USB-A to USB-C cable. And of course, the actual HDMI lead as well. And then we have the fridge. Condition-wise, yeah. Looks really, really good. Could do with a little bit of a clean. There doesn't seem to be much dust build up in and around the fan area at the top, which is really, really good. The sides are pretty spotless. And the back, as you can see, it's not been opened. We have screws under here. And you either heat the sticker up, remove it, and then get access to the screws, or you just go through the sticker to access the screws. And that is looking intact. Okay, let's see if we get any power with it. When I went to test the Xbox Series X, it blew my fuse board and I just heard a loud bang. And yes, I needed a clean change of underwear. So now that I have changed my underwear, we are gonna take this apart and see what's going on with it. This is what a Xbox Series X power supply looks like. This one is the one that went bang. So we do need to be a little bit cautious when handling it. But what I'm gonna do with this is take it straight outside and leave it there until I can safely dispose of it, which I'll be able to do at work come Monday. I think that's the first time something's ever tripped the electrics. So what I'm gonna do is test another power supply that I have for an Xbox Series X. And hopefully I should just be able to put this in, give it a couple of tests and maybe it'll work. I didn't know the issue was going to be a faulty power supply in this Xbox Series X. I was hoping for it. I have actually fixed a few Xbox Series Xs that had shorts on the 12 volt line. So I thought it might go down that road, but I think it's because of the power supply. Okay, I've plugged the known good power supply in. I'm just gonna test and make sure that we get 12 volts. And this time, nothing blew up. I've had it on situations before where we have 12 volts in one cable and not 12 volts in the other. Do we have 12 volts on this cable? Yes, we do. Do we have 12 volts on this cable? Yes, we do. Look at that. Okay, so we have a good known working power supply here. I'm also going to test and make sure that we don't have a short on the 12 volt line, which will be here on the top board. We don't. That's ground. This is the 12 volt line. So if we had a beep here, it would be really bad news, but we don't. And just check the bottom board on the left is negative, which is good. We have a beep on the right is positive 12 volts and no beep. So we don't have a short on either of the two boards. That's really, really good. With that being said, we might put on the power supply and it might not work, but we're gonna give it a go and see what happens. Okay, moment of truth, does it go pop? No. Okay, that's really good news. Next step, does it get power? Here we go. Yes, it does, okay. Is it gonna stay on? It looks like it. Okay, that could be a result. So it looks like it was just a faulty power supply. Let's get it back together quickly and give it a full test. I'm not out of the woods just yet. What I guess I, I should say as a little disclaimer is don't expect to go on eBay and find consoles like this that are just gonna be as simple as what they have been for me today. It's the first time anyway for me that this has actually happened. And I've been doing this for a couple of years now. So this rubber band thing that goes over it always confuses me. It shouldn't confuse me because it's very simple. That's a lot better than what it was. And I'll just finalize by putting the back cover on. Lovely jubbly. There it is, just put the screws back. Okay, I think we're okay. I think we're good. <laughs> it was very nerve wracking. Okay, plug the HDMI cable in as well. First things first, do we have power? Very heavy console to lift up. Yes, we do. Does it stay on? Yes, it does. Okay, that's good. I'm just gonna place that down there. I can hear something. We go over to the game scene and come on, we have the Xbox logo. Oh, we need to update the controller. Just gonna do a couple of basic tests to make sure we're all good, and then we're gonna get onto the pricing and see if I made a profit, which I think will be the case with this video. And here we go, the Xbox is all on, and from what seems to be working fine. Another simple question, I guess, is do we get a disc in this? Ready to up our profit a little bit? No, no, we don't get a disc. That's okay though, I'm okay with that. Let's just take a game disc. We have Red Dead Redemption here, just to make sure that it does pick up and read discs. There we go, yeah, Red Dead pops up. It's installed on the disc, that's perfect. Here we have the final products themselves in all their glory. Like I said, I have been extremely lucky with these purchases. This doesn't happen every single time, but let's work out the profit and see how much I'm gonna make by buying these consoles, fixing them, and then selling them. We've got an Xbox Series X used. Buy it now with a controller to see how much the prices are. You're looking at around about what? 350 pounds, 350. We've got a 350 here, 350 here. You've got 450 and a 439. 370 boxed, one controller, 370. And if we do Xbox One S 500 gigabyte console only, buy it now, used condition, 75, 100, 130, 100. 
120, 95, that's boxed. Now when it comes to the parts side of things, I've used a power supply for an Xbox One S and I've used a power supply for an Xbox Series X. However, I haven't gone out and bought those. They are from consoles that I failed to fix. So therefore I don't think I should be including the cost of those on the profit margins. However, what that does mean, if I do buy something that's faulty from eBay and I'm unable to fix it, I need to declare the whole thing as a loss. Plus in that instance of me not being able to fix something, pricing up all of the parts individually would take me such a long time. So I think it's best if we just do it that way. I am interested to hear your feedback though, so get at me in the comment section below and let me know what way you think I should do this. I'm very keen to start including the prices in these videos. If we say the sale for the Xbox Series X would be 340 just to be able to actually get it sold. Most of them were listed at 350 with a controller. I bought it for 200 pounds, so let's say 140 pounds profit. Minus the eBay fees, I always list when there's 80% off, so maximum you're talking 10 pounds, so 130 pounds profit for the Xbox Series X and I bought the Xbox One S for £45. I'm going to say I'll be able to sell it for around about £70 just for the console itself. After the eBay fees you're talking roughly £22 or so profit bringing our total profit to £162 for this video. If you did enjoy this video make sure you come and hang out with me over here and see if I'm able to fix something for a profit or do I mess up and is it a loss. Have a great rest of your weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.